onto the stage the man behind Brexit and a man who led brilliantly the United Kingdom Independence Party in this fight and won despite all odds, despite horrible name calling, despite so many obstacles. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, and good evening, Mississippi. I come to you from the United Kingdom with a message of hope and a message of optimism. It's a message that says, if the little people, if the real people, if the ordinary decent people are prepared to stand up and fight for what they believe in, we can overcome the big banks. We can overcome the multinationals. And we did it. We made, we made June the 23rd our Independence Day when we smashed the establishment. And we did it. Everybody said we'd lose. And what did we see? We saw experts from all over the world. We saw the International Monetary Fund. We saw Moody's. We saw Standard & Poor's. We saw global leaders giving us Project Fear, telling us that if we voted not to be run by a bunch of unelected old men in Brussels, <laughs> Yeah, well, it's OK. They don't like me either, so it doesn't really matter, does it? But they told us our economy would fall off a cliff. They told us there'd be mass unemployment. They told us investment would leave our country. And David Cameron, then our Prime Minister, but no longer, told us we might even get World War III and we saw the commentariat and we saw the polling industry doing everything they could to demoralise our campaign. On the day of the vote itself, that morning, they put us 10 points behind. And actually, they were all wrong. And they were wrong because what the Brexit campaign did is we reached those people who've been let down by modern global corporatism. We reached those people. We reach those people who have never voted in their lives but believe by going out and voting for Brexit they could take back control of their country, take back control of their borders and get back their pride and self-respect. Now the big card, the big card the Prime Minister decided to play in the referendum is he got a foreign visitor to come to London to talk to us. Yes, we were visited by one Barack Obama. And he talked down to us. He treated us as if we were nothing. One of the oldest functioning democracies in the world. And here he was telling us to vote Remain. So I, having criticised, having criticised and condemned his behaviour, I could not possibly tell you how you should vote in this election. But, but, you know, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I'm hearing you. Uh, but I will say this. If I was an American citizen, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if you paid me. In fact, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if she paid me. Folks, the message is clear. 
The parallels are there. There are millions of ordinary Americans who've been let down, who've had a bad time, who feel the political class in Washington are detached from them, who feel so many of their representatives are politically correct parts of that liberal media elite. They feel people aren't standing up for them and they've actually in many cases given up on the whole electoral process. And I think, I think that you have a fantastic opportunity here with this campaign. You can go out. You can beat the pollsters. You can beat the commentators. You can beat Washington. And you'll do it by doing what we did for Brexit in Britain. We had our own people's army of ordinary citizens who went out and delivered leaflets, who went to meet people where they worked and where they socialised, who convinced and inspired people to go out if this was the one and only time in their life and to vote for change. So my advice to you, if you want change in this country, you better get your walking boots on, you better get out there campaigning. And remember, and remember, anything is possible if enough decent people are prepared to stand up against the establishment. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. Thank you, Nigel. What a job.